Changes to the Lord's Prayer On April 11, 2021, Divine Mercy Sunday, during the celebration of the Holy Mass, Francis made public for the first time the new version of the Lord's Prayer in Italian, which contains a change in the phrase Lead us not into temptation, that has been changed to Do not abandon us into temptation. <laughs> this novelty of the new Roman Missal began to take effect in Italy and has also been implemented in France, endorsed by the Congregation for Divine Worship and approved by Francis, replacing the previous Missal that began in 2002. Some people question this change with the new translations. And on this, Francis gave statements in 2018 in which he commented, Do not let us fall into temptation is a bad translation. It is I who fall, not he who throws me into temptation to see how I fall. A father does not do this. A father helps you to get up immediately. What leads to temptation is Satan. Comments Let us examine with a spiritual magnifying glass how this change comes to please the human ear and is not what God teaches us in his holy word. Let us remember the words of Jesus. Lead us not into temptation. These are words that come from the mouth of God. Jesus our only teacher, our God and Savior, who responded to the apostles with the teaching of the Lord's Prayer when they asked him to teach them how to pray. Luke 11, verse 1, both the Latin translation, made by Saint Jerome from the Greek, Nenos inducas in tentationem, is translated into English with full fidelity in the phrase, lead us not into temptation. The Catechism of the Church teaches us in numeral 2846 that this petition goes directly to the root of the previous one, which is, forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Because our sins are the result of our consent to temptation, therefore, we ask the Father not to lead us into temptation. Absolutely correct and reaffirmed in the Catechism as a traditional prayer for 2,000 years. Francis hopes that all bishops in the different languages will make the change proposed by his new modernism. Apart from the modification to the Lord's Prayer by changing lead us not into temptation to the phrase do not abandon us to temptation. It is also changed in the Missal, the expression in the Gloria, peace on earth to men of good will, replaced by peace on earth to men beloved of the Lord. Who can be like God, the Word of God, Jesus, the Master who does not deceive us, and whose phrases are living words that touch the heart? The Word of God already warns in Revelation 22, verses 18 to 19, whoever adds to, changes, or takes away from the Word of the Holy Scriptures, God will take away his part of the tree of life and will punish him with his plagues. Jesus taught us in the Lord's Prayer, lead us not into temptation. It's because God allows us to fall into temptation since he has all the power to do so. He has all the right to put us to the test. It is his divine will. He allows misfortune to come upon us. Isaiah 45, verse 7, I form the light and create darkness. I bring prosperity and create calamity. I, the Lord, do all these things. Who can defy the word of God? And does not God give us the cross to perfect ourselves through suffering? And when 
he allows us to fall into temptation, it is because he wants us to repent, to suffer for having offended him, and to come to him with a humbled and contrite heart. To ask him not to abandon us into temptation is to suggest that he let us sin but at the same time restrains us, when sin is not God's responsibility but ours. God allows us to fall into temptation and then into sin because we actually need to be pruned in order to bear fruit, John 15 verse 2. After falling into temptation, that is, after sinning, God proposes repentance. But God does not repent for us. He expects us to do it with our own will. That is why Jesus never made a mistake nor gave us a bad teaching. We must tell him, lead us not into temptation, because in this way we ask for the grace not to sin. Instead, if we say, do not abandon us to temptation. Instead of asking for the grace not to sin, we are implying that we are going to sin anyway, of our own free will, and expecting to accept our sin, which God never accepts. He only accepts our repentance, not the sin. This change to the Lord's Prayer, in other words, is suggesting to God to accept our sin, which is heresy, because God is holy. Francis says that what leads to temptation is Satan, which sounds right, but it is not, because Satan only influences the initial temptation, and that with the consent of God. The unrepentant sinner seems tempted by his lust, he does it to satisfy his pleasure on his own and without the help of the devil. We cannot blame Satan for all our sins, because we sin on our own. It is for this very reason that we should ask God not to let us fall into temptation before we sin. Not after, as implied in the phrase, do not abandon us to temptation. It is as if the grace of God did not exist, and Jesus had not precisely given us the prayer, lead us not into temptation. St. Jerome's translation was correct and has been valid for 2,000 years. Why change it now? As for the change in the Gloria, the expression, peace on earth to men of goodwill, that is replaced by the expression, peace on earth to men, beloved by the Lord. This is not what the angels cried out to God in praise. Peace on earth to men of good will means peace to all who do the will of God, not to sinners, nor to the beloved of the Lord. For in reality God loves all men, but He gives peace to men of good will. Peace on earth to men loved by the Lord implies that God loves some and not others, which is impossible because God is love. Or it can mean that God is indifferent to sin and loves all equally. Even man being sinful is loved by God. What God does not love is man's sin. This change to the man whom the Lord loves removes from Scripture the privilege that even angels praise in men to possess the divine will. When Christ was born, the men of good will were the humble, the shepherds who came to worship him, the magi who felt the call to worship God even though they were pagans, and Saint Joseph and Mary. This came to all of them, not to all human beings, because peace only comes to the one who has the good will to leave sin. This is the fruit of man's reconciliation with God. What other changes will we have? The Church became the target of modernism and reforms to the sacred. It seems 
that it was wrong for 2,000 years. And now, suddenly, it is being modernized as well as the Holy Scriptures. Let us ask the Lord to help us and give us the discernment to recognize what is both and what is not. If you like this video, please give us a like, subscribe to our channel, The Work of God, share on social networks, and don't forget to leave your valuable comments. Tell us, do you see any benefit in the modern trend changes that the church is undergoing? God bless you.